Hi, it's Lynn from Lynn EC Designs. Thank you for joining me today. I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator based in West Sussex in the UK. And today I'm coming on with a project from my uh, October 23 card classes. It's a lovely card made with the largest two dies from the Deckled Circles die set. Now this is 14, I think. 14 circles, circle dies, um, that obviously mats and layers. The minute I saw those in the cat these in the catalogue, I knew I wanted to make a circular card. And I've seen other people do it. Um, Stacy Marsh, um, a very talented uh, demo. I've seen a card from her, but this is um, my take on it. This was what we made um, in my class and it is shaded spruce and um, cherry cobbler I'm changing the colours slightly I'll just crack on with it because I'm I don't know I'm a bit speechless today uh, anyway I have used my favourites uh, stamp sets that actually these are the only two Chris, new Christmas sets that I bought this year I think um, Christmas Classics and Joy of Noel. So obviously the season's greetings is the sentiment that I've used. I will link to another card that I shared last week with this stamp. Um, and this is the one that we're using today. So the colours, let me just get those out here. The base I'm going to use this time is um, Old Olive. Now I've pre-cut the front panel, but basically this is a piece of A4 and I've cut it down. I've taken a trim off uh, um, so that this is six inches wide and I've scored it in the centre like that. And I'm going to use the largest of the dies to create my card base. Now you can use any kind of shaped die to make a shaped card you can just do use um, any of uh, your dies you just have to make sure that the top of the die is above the crease so the crease is here and I've got you can see I've got it across there so I will go and um, quickly uh, do that now with this um, because it's deckled, they kind of stand up quite well. But actually, there's one place on here which has got some um, a flat bit. There's two bits there. So I'm going to put that on the, the bottom and have a little bit exposed up here. So that's what you're left with. And you've got the seam up here. As I say, I've already die cut another one, which... I'm going to stick over the top and that actually means that you can't see that there's a little hinge at the back. So we're going to do that. I've cut two bits of basic white um, for the matte layer and, and actually this will go through. So you want two of those, one for the front, one for the back, the inside, sorry. But you can cut them both at one time. So there we go, that is to, I must get some new plates, but that will quite easily do two at one time. This is the strip that I um, cut off the sheet of basic white A4 and I'm going to do my stamping on that. Um, there's, my, there's my memento. Oops my dies back before I get those lost and I used four of these to make my wreath While we're stamping, I think we will. Do we? No, we'll we'll colour these. Colour these now. I 
and despair that I've got a sheet because our stamping blends do um, go through as we know the back of the card so I have got stamping blends which I absolutely love and let's get to colouring so we'll use A light old olive probably just show you me coloring one lot in it's a bit boring really watching somebody color and then I'm going to come in just at the base do a little bit of shading it's not really necessary but it's quite nice to have little bits of color there and all i'm doing is following really the the lines in the stamp i'm not going to do anything clever so i leave that like that i've got light shaded spruce for the holly leaves Quite like just giving them all each of the leaves different colours. We've got so many lovely greens. And this is a very traditional colour. So come in with the dark, and I'm just gonna a little bit of dark just on the veins that are in the stamp so as I say I'm not really using the blends to do blending just adding a little bit of extra color and I'm just going to come in with the dark lost lagoon and I'm going to Go over those. Make that firm bronze to me. And then nothing clever. Just adding a little bit of colour. And then I've got light real red and I'm just doing one dot in each of those bowls. And that's all you need. So I'll just do all of those. So as I say, I might not leave it all in. it's quite boring when it's repetition like this isn't it so it is Sunday the 5th of November today in the UK so firework night and it's just, I'm dreading it actually. I know there's fireworks in a big firework display down the road. And um, I'm just praying that they use some silent fireworks rather than the noisy ones. Last night, our poor little puppy didn't know what to do with himself. He's usually okay with fireworks um hasn't really had any trouble with them before he's four and um when 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 we got him as a puppy i played sort of an 
a soundtrack for him so that he would get used to different types of noises. But yesterday there was a firework, the fireworks really close to us. And poor little Poppet, he was just beside himself. He didn't know where to go. He was flitting between me and my husband, trying to get safe. And I, you know, I love fireworks, I really do, but you can get silent ones now. Um, you can use drones, I'm probably more expensive, but um, really, the animals hate, hate them. The cats aren't bothered. Yeah, Bailey didn't like it at all last night. Poor little poppet. Right. And I'm talking just in case I, I, I do keep this in. So I've got my card classes this week coming. hadn't actually, uh, let's see, I haven't uh, finished creating the cards yet, oops, I know what, in my head I know what we're doing so it's not too bad, it's very easy this time of year anyway, um, coming up with ideas because it's Christmas, they're all Christmas cards or And everybody's happy with that thankfully and it helps me because I end up doing cards for what I need for my stash so I need to get my I think I need, should start actually writing some of the cards because the post isn't like mixed up messed up in the UK but uh, it can take forever. In fact, we got post today on a Sunday. So I'm guessing the postman, the post lady, delivered them to the wrong house and then whoever got them was out yesterday. Yeah, very strange to see mail on the doorstep on a Sunday. in again with the dark just to add a little and I do tend to use the the bullet end um, you've got the bullet end and a brush tip end but it's very easy to um, press too hard and to damage the nib um, I mean I don't do it but I know some of the ladies that come to class struggle with it struggle with them oh, I've got a drippy nose and then what did we use was that I think we used the dark Concentrating, finding hard to talk <laughs> and colour. Who's good at multitasking? Definitely not. We actually in the UK, well, down this neck of the woods, we've had lots of rain this week, and. Um, Today was is blue skies and dry and we walked into town, um, into Worthing, the next town, 
oh my goodness it is so busy i think everybody's been cooped up and inside so everybody is taking advantage of the nice weather to get out and about right there we go they came together quite nicely but look yes the color i mean not so much not so bad with that because i wasn't doing any blending but it does bleed through so just be aware of that i should get my little mini emboss machine and let's die cut these just wondering whether to use a bit of a washi tape or whether to risk it. I think I'm going to actually use some low tech tape. Hopefully, you just need to take a bit of stick out of it so that it doesn't tear. Let's put that on there and run it through. check to see whether it is in whether I'm in in on screen or not I think I am hope so that goes through lovely Ooh. so nicely Luckily, I left enough gap. Let's make sure. Don't rush, Lynn. You've got plenty of time. It's not a race. One final one. Now, um, unless I get myself organised this week, there may not be a video next Sunday or next week because we're going away in the van, which will be fabulous. I'm hoping, well, let's just keep fingers crossed for the weather. That's lovely. So we'll keep that, put that out the way. So we're getting there so there's my base there's my four bits now the other thing that we need is a piece for the banner i thought i'd show you this so we need a piece that is one inch by six and three quarters and you score at one one and a half four and a quarter sorry five and a quarter and five and three quarters so let me just there's an inch the inch mark the inch mark at the top so I can run that through I've already cut this to the right length but one of the things I often do is I use this this side when it's uh, um, to make it easier. So I'm going to score at one and then one and a half, which is there. And then I'm going to spin that round and one and one and a half. 
so that is exactly the same as those measurements it's just easier and quicker to do it that way and then you fold the two ends up and then the, the next one in you fold away from you and that way you make your banner before I trim the tails and I've got a great tip which um, if you don't want to do it by eye um, I'm going to do the heat embossing some Versamark and some my, my dust buddy some Versamark ink and some white emboss powder running a bit low on that so what did I do with my sentiment? There we go. It looks dirty. Didn't do a very good job of cleaning that, did I? This has been used an awful lot this year. There we go. Just fits in there perfectly. Hopefully I've done that well. And I'll get a, I've got a little spoon here. Tip it on and then it tips straight back in the pot, which is fabulous. No mess. And then I've got my, this is one of the uh, kit boxes. I've lined it with tin foil and I find this helps with heat embossing. I'm just going to get it up to um, heat shows up so well I love heat embossing I think it's just fabulous it's what made me fall in love with stamping um, the first thing that made me fall in love with stamping that cool down and then just give that a quick flick over and all the um, Calc or whatever's in here comes off now for the tails to get a banner end use the grid paper the grid sheet find the center and then just come up make a ooh, make a little notch Do the same it's, and I am just coming up half a centimetre I just need to do the same either end and then hopefully from the corner snip to your mark and 
hopefully that will work perfectly. I'm trying to do it without getting my head. I think it's time. I need to, I cocked that up. There we go. I need to get my my eyes tested again. That'll do. Let's just use. Should have done it on the back side. Just use a rubber to notch that out, and then. Use a bit of glue that side, just on the small section, but both sides of the small section, and then hold it in place. And you have a lovely little banner to go over the top your card so that's fabulous so I'm gonna take one of these circles let's see doesn't doesn't matter I'm just trying to sort of get use the grid paper again so that it's kind of in the middle if you want to be really precise and I shall show you what I'm going to do. Use another one of the deckled circles. Just to make a few little marks. That then helps with placement. create your wreath. Now what I am going to do, I'm happy with that, so I am just going to add glue on the bottom part and I'm going to So that I know where it is. And then I'm next one. Now you could make this fuller or bigger by doing more, but I think for me, four was enough. Happy with four, and then we're just going to do a little under there. Stick that there. Happy with that. Now you could just leave it like that, or something that I did just to give it a little bit of um, dimension. I stuck one of the mini glue, uh, mini dimensionals under the top, top, I'm calling it the top, whether it's the top, but the other end of the sprig, and that just gives it a nice little 3D effect. And then you can decide if there's a right or a wrong way. I haven't got it quite in the middle. It comes out to the top a little bit that way. Doesn't really matter. And then that, go because that's going to go right over the top. So I think I'm going to have that like that. And 
I'm just going to put some dimensionals, oops, dimensionals there, take off the backing. I must have faffed around a lot, pulls this come back in from walking Bailey. So that's going to be in the middle. So like that. And you could then um, put glue under those edges, uh, under these edges, but I'm not going to worry about that. Let's just assemble the card. So I'm going to. Here's our base piece. And you don't really have to um, line it up, but it's quite easy actually. She said, she says. There we go. Line that up. And for a round card, I think, come on, it's just amazing. I'm going to add that on just flat if you wanted to uh, dimensional it up. The only thing I would say is have that open so you know where the top is, and then you're, unless you want your sentiment at the side. Um, Put that like that. We'll put that in the centre ish. Obviously, it's going to be nearer the top. And I've got a sentiment from. Um, brightest glow. Brightest glow. What did I do with it? Yes, brightest glow. And it says so. Season's greetings to you and yours this Christmas, which is lovely. And then, um. I am using this time, I'm going to tie a big bow from, this is Real Red Ribbon and it comes in a combo pack with some burlap and I haven't used any of this yet, but I will. Or I'll just add it to my stash, who knows. But that's really pretty. Actually, it looks like it doesn't look like real red. I wonder whether I use Poppy Parade. Ooh. Oh well. It does look different. I wonder whether I should use the same ribbon as before. I do love bits of gold oh, come on then tie a ribbon hmm. I think I might have used poppy parade rather than real red for my We reckon it does look wrong, doesn't it? Let me have a look. What an Egypt. Okay, 
we'll use that on another card we'll use some of the shimmer rib ribbon which is left from our stash <sighs> I love this ribbon so I actually bought more of it there we go I had two lots Tails that no. symmetry ribbons always go on with a glue dot. Yes, it's nice to have a bit of gold that is going to go on there like that. And then we will add some more. I'm almost out, but we'll add some more. What do we want to do? I've got some green. We've got some red sparkles, or I've got some gold. I think I will go for gold, add a little bit more gold. Here, and this is the pastel um, let's use our pokey tool these are the pastel um, adhesive backed sequins There we go. Fabulous. What do you think? Which is the one that you prefer? Yes, I used the C. Yes, Poppy Parade. And I must have used Real Red on that one. I did. Silly girl. Never mind. Which uh, I think I like both. Anyway, I've now got two. So. Thank you for watching. All there will be links to my blog uh, below and um, in the description box below. You can buy all of these products, not the ribbon that's retired, um, through my online store. And there will again there'll be links in the blog for that. Um, anyway, I'm waffling, so thank you for watching. I do appreciate it, and I will see you again soon. Bye for now.